Good afternoon, dear students. Today we uh, talk about uh, main laws, basic concepts of chemistry. Um, talking about chemistry, uh, usually then I talk about uh, with audience. Um, I start our lectures with uh, small questions, very simple question. Uh, what is your association about chemistry? And usually I hear um, that um, chemistry is molecules, substances, different reactions, and all that position is true. Chemistry is a science which studies uh, different materials and their transformations. And of course, it studies compositions of materials, structures, uh, properties of materials, and dependence of these properties on composition and structures. And of course, terms of uh, substances conversions. So we need to know uh, how substances react with the other in different situations and different uh, environmental conditions. But um, in our university, in technical university, uh, we are going to work with different um, technical um, compositions with different vehicles, huge vehicles, rockets, um, airplanes. And of course, uh, our course of chemistry uh, basis not just on properties of different substances, because in school you studied um, um, non-organic chemistry, organic chemistry, uh, you studied uh, exact properties of different substances. But here, in our course, we talked about physical chemistry, general chemistry and uh, basics of physical chemistry. Uh, why? And what does it mean, physical chemistry? Physical chemistry is a part of chemistry which studies general laws and concepts of uh, chemical phenomena, but uh, using laws of physics. And, of course, investigation methods of physics and, uh, of course, mathematical operations. Uh, we know that chemistry is a physical, uh, it's a uh, natural science and it studied all that happened around, uh, around us in the world. But all uh, processes, all reactions around us doesn't depend on our uh, mind and its matter in motion. Let's talk about motion. Um, which types of motion do you know? Of course, mechanical motion, electrical, chemical, uh, and, and so on. But all um, parameters, all, all substances, all materials, all um, motions had qualitative and quantitative characteristic. And for motion, uh, this characteristic is energy, which corresponds to different types of motion. For example, uh, let's imagine a rocket engine. Uh, in rocket engines, we have combustion reaction, and uh, this reaction, chemical reaction between fuel and oxidizer, and it gives us um, thermal energy. Uh, if we uh, talk about different electronic devices, uh, for example, which you are using right now uh, to watch this lecture. For example, laptops, uh, I don't know, phones. Of course, all these gadgets have um, uh, batteries. And battery, it's, a chem it's electrochemical system uh, which transform um, energy of chemical reaction to electrical energy. Or let's imagine the solution process. For example, we put a spoon of sugar in a cup of tea, and uh, we uh, talk here about um, as well exothermic or endothermic reactions. Uh, we also talk about thermal energy. Um, so. Uh, the main starting object in our course, in the course of chemistry, is a substance. And meat, uh, matter appears uh, into different substances. Substances, uh, in terms associated with uh, energy uh, through Einstein equation. But um, before start our course, of course, we need to talk about um, basic uh, determination from school. 
You know that all substances consist of uh, molecules, and molecules in terms consist of at from atoms. And atom is a basic building block of chemical structure. Atom, uh, there is small, low weight, neutral uh, particle, um, unless they have um, undergone addition or uh, loss of electrons to produce uh, negatively charged or positively charged atoms, uh, which are known as ions. Um, more widely about ions, uh, we'll talk in future lectures. Uh, what is an element? Element is a group of atoms uh, of only one type. And element is defined as a matter that uh, cannot be broken down further by chemical methods. Uh, you know that each element uh, can be identified by numbers of protons and neutrons, uh, as you see in the picture, uh, which contain the nucleus. And around this nucleus, we have a uh, sphere uh, consists of electrons, a special number of electrons. Um, all um, atoms uh, form molecule. Molecule is a uh, different group of atoms that chemically are uh, bounded together. So uh, they, are, they are bounded um, uh, by an uh, attractive force of different nature. But um, in our course, we of course need to talk about mole and the concept of mole. Uh, let's imagine that we want to produce solution of um, um, acetic acid. And uh, if we want to prepare this uh, solution, uh, for example, we need to take 10 grams of ethanol. But uh, 10 grams of ethanol contains um, uh, contained by a huge number of uh, molecules. For example, especially 10 grams of ethanol contains uh, 1.31 uh, mul uh, multiplied 10 power 23. So it's a true really huge number. And of course, it's inconvenient. That's why in the um, course of chemistry, uh, we use such parameter as a mole. What does it mean, mole? Mole is defined as the quantity uh, uh, of a given substance that contains of many molecules or formal unions uh, as a number of atoms in tw uh, 12 grams of isotope carbon 12. Um, for example, here, well, one mole of uh, um, ethanol uh, contains the same number of ethanol uh, molecules uh, as one um, 12 gram of uh, carbon um, isotope 12 uh, as well can see. Um, and in the chemical course and in the physical course, then uh, these 12 grams of carbon uh, isotope carbon 12 is called like Avogadro's number. Well, and talking about substance. Um, all substances uh, depends on their compositions. We can divide into two groups, simple substance and complicated substance. As you see in the pictures, you, uh, here we have two examples. And simple substance can compose of atoms of the same element. For example, oxygen, hydrogen, um, sodium, potassium, calcium, and so on. For example, in the uh, left picture, you can see a molecule of nitrogen that consists of two atoms of nitrogen. And complicated substances composed of um, atoms of the same element. Uh, of the different um, sort of different chemical elements, of course, uh, with the right one picture. For example, water consists of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Of course, here in complicated uh, substances, we have four groups, four classes of substances, salt, um, uh, oxide, uh, hydroxide, and acid. Uh, all substances in our uh, world, uh, they are in interaction. And in this case, they form a system. Uh, systems. 
In our future lectures, uh, we will know different types of systems. For example, we'll talk about uh, thermodynamic system, what does it mean? Electrochemical system, uh, of course, electrochemical system we use every day in our, um, in our life. And uh, kinetic system, dispersed system, but for today, we need classified uh, systems like homogeneous system and heterogeneous system. What does it mean exactly? Here you see um, uh, two different um, reactions. In the first uh, example, you see reaction, combustion reaction between oxygen and nitrogen. And in the second one, you see reaction between metal calcium and oxygen. And homogeneous system consists of, uh, of one phase. So we have here um, uh, substances which are in uh, one aggregational state. For example, oxygen is gas and nitrogen is gas as well. And heterogeneous system, we have at least two phases. As we see in our reaction, metal reacts with gas. So phase is a, hom a homogeneous part of system that is separated from our parts uh, by physical boundaries. So we have three different types of um, phase. Solid, gases form and liquid. Um, but minimal amount of substances uh, forms all phases of the system we call components. Uh, let's take two examples and try to determine uh, how many uh, phases we have and how many components we have in this situation. First example, you see in the picture a glass of water with uh, ice. Of course, here we have two phases, uh, of course, ice a solid form and uh, water liquid form. But one component, because we had the same molecular structure, uh, water, uh, which consists of uh, two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. But in the second picture, you see a cup of tea. And if we talk about cup of tea, tea uh, we have here, for example, uh, sugar, water and tea. Uh, actually, uh, I wrote that uh, solution of sugar with water. And uh, when we talk about solution of sugar with water, we have two components. But if we take cup of tea, of course, we have third component, tea. But uh, how many phases we have? As you see, just one phase. Uh, of course, we have solution, liquid form, solution of sugar and water. Um, what as well here had uh, liquid form. So now you uh, know difference between uh, phase and components. Um, but in our course, of course, we are in a technical university. Uh, as I said, uh, we will work with uh, huge vehicles, technical vehicles. And of course, uh, we use not just theory, we use not just determination, but of course we use, uh, we make a different calculations. And in chemistry, uh, we have a special part for calculations. And this part called stoichiometry. It's a part of chemistry that deals with the mass or volume ratio between uh, different reactants. Uh, but in practice, we use uh, several laws of stoichiometry. And the first law, uh, law named after, called after Lomonosov Lavoisier, to uh, scientists, law of conservation of mass. What does it mean? Uh, the total mass of all reactants, uh, all substances participate in the reaction, e equals the total mass of products. So if we have reaction between substances A and B, it gives us uh, substances C and D. So sum of masses sum for substance A and B give us uh, sum of masses for substances C and D. Next law, law of quantity of substances composition. Uh, or we call it like Proust law. Uh, named after Proust. Each pure substance 
all this has a constant qualitative and quantitative uh, composition, irrespective on the method of its production. For example, um, carbon dioxide, CO2, uh, we can produce it uh, in two different reactions. When we uh, burn uh, carbon in pure oxygen, uh, or uh, in the reaction between uh, CO, uh, so uh, oxide of carbon with valency 2, and oxygen. But um, for, uh, um, for composition of the substance, uh, uh, it doesn't matter for us which method of production we have. We always had the same uh, composition for product. One atom of carbon, and two atoms of oxygen. So um, the same numbers of atoms and the same element. The next law uh, we call it like Dalton's law or law of multiple proportions. Uh, if two different chemical elements in different reactions uh, produce different chemical substance, so the same mass of one chemical element of one sub uh, substance required uh, such masses of another element, which corresponds to each other as a simple whole numbers. What do I mean here? For example, uh, we as well use carbon and oxygen, uh, of course it's convenient to use to show example. Uh, as you see from uh, previous law, uh, carbon can produce with oxygen in the reaction on combustion reaction uh, two different oxides with valence two uh, of carbon and valence four. So we have CO and CO2, uh, two different oxides. Uh, but for one mole of carbon, uh, exactly here one mole to 12 grams, uh, in first reaction we have just uh, we need just half of mole for oxygen, uh, it means 16 grams. And in second reaction, we need uh, exact one mole, 32 grams. So uh, if we take ratio between masses of oxygen, uh, 16 uh, and 32 grams, it gives us a uh, simple uh, ratio between simple wall numbers, one and two. So, once again, the same mass of carbon, 12 grams, required such masses of oxygen in first reaction, uh, 16 grams, and in second reaction, 32 grams, uh, which uh, gives us ratio uh, between simple wall numbers, 1 and 2. Second law, uh, next law, next one, uh, Avogadro's law, I think, um, you know it from school, from physical course, but we also want to use it in the chemistry course. Um, equal ones of different vapors and gases uh, in the same conditions, I mean um, at the same temperature and pressure, contain the same number of particles. But in our calculations in our course, uh, we want to use consequences from this law. Not exactly law, but uh, consequences for calculation in part. Uh, first consequence tells us that one mole of all gases and vapors in normal conditions, uh, what does mean normal condition? Uh, when we have uh, room temperature, uh, 25 degrees, uh, or, I'm sorry, zero degrees, or, and uh, pressure, one atmosphere, and one mole of all gases and vapors in these conditions um, contains 0 uh, 6.02 multiplied 10 power 23 particles. Uh, as you already know, uh, we call it like a gathered number. And one mole of all these gases and vapors um, takes uh, 22.4 liters. Uh, we call it like molar volume in the same conditions, uh, in normal conditions, one atmosphere is pressure and uh, temperature zero um, uh, uh, per Celsius. Uh, also, we use uh, third consequence from uh, Avogadro's law that tell us that um, relative density of one gas over another gas 
is equal to the ratio of their molar um, masses. So if you want to calculate uh, mass of any gas and um, unknown gas, uh, we can take a molar mass of known gas, for example, um, air, oxygen, um, and so on, and multiply it on um, relative density of uh, this gas. Uh, so here you see um, M is molar mass, M1 um, molar mass of unknown gas, and D is relative density. Next law is what we call um, Dalton's law, law of partial pressures. The uh, pressure of mixture of different gases, non-interactive uh, chemical gases, ideal gases, is equal to the sum of their partial pressure. So here you see formula how we can calculate uh, pressure of all this mixture. Uh, as I already said, it's the sum of partial pressure of different gases uh, I. Next law, Richter's law, equivalence law. Um, from the second law, um, law of Proust, law of quantity of uh, um, a different substance, uh, it follows that all substances rate in strictly uh, defined proportions. But uh, uh, before we um, uh, say exactly equivalence law, we need to, uh, to tell about equivalent mass, because uh, from school you know what is mean molar mass, it's a mass of one mole of different substance, but here exactly in equivalence law or uh, in our course we'll use equivalent mass, mass of one equivalent. What does it mean? It's a weight of substance which reacts or replaced in reaction one part by weight of hydrogen or eight parts by weight of oxygen. Uh, why exactly one part or eight parts um, in this determination? We'll see a bit later in the example. We can calculate equivalent mass uh, both for simple substance and for complicated substance. If we talk about simple substance or pure element, for example, sulfur, oxygen, sodium, and so on. Uh, how we can calculate it? Uh, equivalent mass in this uh, situation is a ratio between atomic mass of this element and valency of this element. And uh, here uh, we need to note that valency of uh, some elements uh, variable, for example, sulfur has uh, uh, valency 2, valency 4, 6, but um, in this situation uh, we need to know exactly in which substance uh, we use this element. This is for pure ele element or simple substance. Uh, then uh, we need to know how to calculate equivalent mass for different complicated substances. As I already said, we have four groups, the four classes of different substances, I mean complicated substances. Of course, uh, hydroxides, uh, acids, uh, salts, and oxide. Um, most of uh, hydroxides are alkali, so uh, to calculate equivalent mass for alkali instead of uh, atomic mass, we use, of course, molar mass of this alkali. And we need to divide this molar mass on numbers of hydroxyl groups, so uh, numbers of OH groups in this alkali. For example, if we talk about um, uh, sodium hydroxide, uh, here we have just one group, so we divide uh, by one. For acid, almost the same situation. We need to take molar mass of uh, acid, but in this situation we divide it on numbers of um, hydrogen cations. Um, exactly right here, cations, not uh, numbers of atoms, pure hydrogen atoms, because in um, organic acid, not all atoms uh, in the cation process give us um, cations. So, to calculate equivalent mass of uh, acid, we need to take molar mass and divide on numbers of uh, hydrogen cations. 
Uh, what about salt and oxide? Uh, as well, we use molar mass of salt and uh, divide on numbers of metals which forms this uh, salt and velocity of this metal. Also, the same situation for oxide, but uh, we divide molar mass of oxide on numbers of elements for this, uh, which form this oxide. Of course, you know that um, oxide can be formed not just from metals, but from non-metal elements as well, and the valency of these elements. And then we need to see examples of different calculation for equivalent mass. Uh, we make small table where we have equivalent mass and equivalent volume. And we calculate it for oxygen and hydrogen. Let's start from hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen is a simple substance. As we already know, for simple substance, we can calculate equivalent mass as atomic mass of this substance over valency. For hydrogen, atomic mass equal 1, according to periodic table, and valency of hydrogen as well 1. Uh, one note that we don't need to multiply the numbers of hydrogen in uh, our simple substance. We use just uh, atomic mass, not molar mass here. So, equivalent mass for hydrogen is 1 gram over mole equivalent. So, placed here, 1 gram. Uh, equivalent volume. It's a volume of one equivalent for this substance. Uh, equivalent volume for hydrogen in this situation we can calculate like this. Molar volume of all uh, gases, uh, 22.4 liters, and molar mass for hydrogen equal to uh, gram per mole. Equivalent um, molar volume, as I already said, 22.4 liters. But equivalent mass equal 1 uh, gram. In this situation, we use proportion and we can see that equivalent volume 11.2 uh, liters. Of course, molar mass and uh, equivalent mass are uh, different in two. So, volumes as well, we need to uh, divide equivalent uh, molar volume, 22.4 liters, we need to divide by two. What about oxygen in this situation? And now let's calculate equivalent mass and equivalent volume for oxygen. Oxygen as well, simple substance, so we know that uh, equivalent mass we calculate like atomic mass or valency. Atomic mass, according to periodic table um, for oxygen, equal 16. Uh, uh, valency for oxygen, always 2. So, equivalent mass in this situation, 8 grams uh, per one mole equivalent. And now, you can see why in determination of uh, equivalent mass we use one part by weight of hydrogen and eight parts by weight of oxygen. Of course, uh, equivalent mass for these substances uh, equal uh, one and eight. Equivalent volume for oxygen in this situation we calculate absolutely the same like for hydrogen, one mole of um, oxygen as a gas uh, takes 22.4 liters, but molar mass for oxygen as a molecule, as a gas, not atomic mass, molar mass, equal uh, 32 grams per one mole. So in this situation, a difference in uh, equivalent mass and molar mass uh, in 4, so we need to divide molar volume 22.4 uh, liter by 4 in this situation, equivalent volume for oxygen 5.6 liters. 
uh, I, um, uh, uh, I ask you to uh, keep in mind these four numbers because uh, we need to use and we are going to use it in uh, our future calculations, our future examples and as I said in electrochemical processes, in corrosion and uh, in um, uh, electrolysis and so on.